You know, there, there's a term in our business uh, when it comes to memory. One type of memory is called flashbulb memory. And flashbulb memory is a memory where there's an emotion attached to it. Number 80, Aquarius Crane on the return. I often talk about that game. It's a game that you just can't forget. Q was having a game of his life. It seemed like he was catching everything. He was a receiver. We were down, it was fourth, and the ball was constantly going towards me. Probably happened 15 feet in front of me. I was standing on the sideline. I just did a couple yards, dash, caught the ball. I was so determined just to score that I wasn't allowing myself to, to be stopped. Q was trying to stretch out, you know, to get a first down. It was just one of those things, you know, it was a clean hit, but it was, it was just one of those hits that changed Q's life. For a moment, it was silent. It's tough to remember that. Q was at least unconscious. Then, you know, it was clear it was probably more than that. Here comes Small. You know, he come towards me. And he just tells me, keep your eyes open, whatever you do. Rescue squad, you know, rushed him over to uh, the hospital. That night, that was the night everything changed. At a young age, I was so troubled, sleeping in cars, abandoned homes, going days without food. I was lashing out, making it hard on my, my grandmother because she did it all by herself. See, I didn't have many male figures in my life, the ones that I did have. They were in prison. Coach Anderson, he wasn't just even a counselor. He wanted to be involved. And I could see that. The first word was that Q would be paralyzed from his neck down. Many times Coach Small and I would get in the car and you know go see Q. I can remember one night, just out of the blue, Q says, Hey, Coach, um, I want you to know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to graduate from high school. I was like, great, Q. I'm, I'm all about it, man. And he says, uh, no, you, you don't understand. I'm, not only am I going to graduate, but I'm going to graduate on time. I'm thinking to myself, how are you going to do that, man? You, you've been out of school now. You can't hold a pencil. Everyone thought that would be too much to carry. Coach Anderson believed, though. Q, it's possible. But man, I'm telling you, it's going to be a long race, and it's going to, it's going to mean you're going to have to get after it, big time. All I need is a chance. I can do the rest. Just put me in a position. All right, how can he pull this off? How can he get this? We set up this thing where somebody came to his house daily. It's Saturday and Sunday. I didn't have a free day, along with therapy. And it was hard. But I grabbed that diploma. To watch him graduate on time with his class really, really special. Q 
had every reason in the world to tap out, to say, I'm not doing it. And that's, that's what's so amazing about this kid. Playing football, it was something that I loved to do, but that wasn't it. I wanted to get through school. I tell myself, you're halfway there. Just keep moving. Thank you. I could really get used to that applause. After high school, I continued to move forward. And just last December, I graduated from Georgia Gwinnett College with a bachelor's in political science. Well, that's addictive. <laughs> As I was preparing to be here with you today, Coach Anderson asked me a question. What is it I love and respect about this audience? What is it I love and respect about this audience? And I thought about it for a moment, and it didn't take me long to respond. I said, Coach, well, that's easy. If it wasn't for you as educators, I wouldn't be here today. I understand we have an amazing speaker here today, Dr. Lopez, who's an expert on hope. And I seen many of his videos on YouTube, and it was something that he said that stuck out to me about the design of future. And in my design, when I was in high school, it was football. All I knew was football. And when I got injured, I was lost for a moment. But the educators of South Carolina High School, they helped me edit that future. And to see that, that they really cared, it helped me. It's because of that love and respect that they have for me that helped me continue to move forward. And that's what I wanted to talk about for a moment, that love and respect. I understand as administrators, one of your main priorities is numbers and test scores. But I believe if those teachers and those administrators in that building make it a priority to love and value those students, those test scores will take care of themselves. We all want to feel valued by the significant people in our lives. Students are no different. Teachers are no different. I mean, if you just think about it for a moment, aren't you more amped about going out your way for a boss that's, that shows that he respects and cares for you, rather than one who shows lacks of communication? I'm talking about the boss that checks on you, hey, how's your day going? How's the family? because you slack when you have family emergency. Opposed to the boss that doesn't even remember your name. Calls you Bob when your name is Michael. <laughs> <laughs> You're more willing to go out your way for the, bo the boss that knows your name. Students are no different. Teachers are no different. Now, I don't know about test scores. But I do know 
about that love and respect. I'm a prime example for that. The video that we just saw, that's an example of educators loving and respecting me. So my question to you as administrators, how well are you loving and respecting those teachers and those students in that building? Matter of fact, when you have a moment, I want you to just take 30 minutes of your day. I mean, 30, not 30 minutes, just 30 seconds. I want you to write down those things that you love and respect. And once you compile that list, I want you to figure out ways how you can communicate that love to those teachers and those students in that building. Because those teachers, they're the ones with their boots in the ground, with our most prized possessions, those students. And when you do that, and when you show them that, it will take care of itself. Thank you.